So we have this dashboard. And this is kind of like the premise of the demo is I'm always collecting syslogs into Splunk from my devices. And I happen to be like a network engineer that that knows some um, Ansible in terms of like creating um, you know, templates and playbooks and all that stuff. But I want some help because I'm not 100% sure like the best way to convert my manual troubleshooting process into automation. So I'm running this, let's say like in like a test environment that also has other tools that I have access to. So Splunk and um, I also have ServiceNow in there so that I can kind of create the way I want it to look when it's in production. But I'm going through like an iteration of this to make sure that everything works before I deploy this playbook that I'm going to use an AI in the production. So that was kind of what we were talking about earlier. And right now, the current state is I have an OSPF adjacency um, from this router. This is the router's public IP address to another router in a lab environment, you know, to, to this private IP address. So right now there's a full adjacency. And if I refresh it, that should stay there just to make sure it wasn't stuck. Okay, yeah, so it's still, it's up and running and it has that um, adjacency. So what I wanna do is I want to mess around with it on purpose and break it so that I can create a playbook and go in an order of like some of the troubleshooting that I'd like to do. So what I'll need to do is I actually need to go into the router on you know one of these routers that's connected together with OSPF. So over here, I'm gonna log into um, router one. So we'll make sure everything's up and running. So the, the standard that I have is tunnel zero is where I have my um, OSPF connection and tunnel one is BGP. So tunnel zero is the one that I'm, you know, my focal point right now because we care about OSPF. And I also want to make sure that I have an OSPF neighbor, which we do because Splunk is telling us we do, but just to check it here locally on the router. So it is up and it's running. So I know that there's a lot of different misconfigurations that could happen in my team as they're, you know, bringing up or reconfiguring devices or reconfiguring OSPF that they might make a change that could impact the adjacency um, of those routers. If I didn't know some of those things to check, then that would be a good example of using one of those um, LLMs like the um, Cisco Deep Network to ask it, like, what are the normal, you know, troubleshooting you would go through for an adjacency problem with OSPF. But in this case, I kind of know like what I want to do, but I want to um, automate it so that I can hand off this workflow and um, also operationalize it, you know, into a feedback loop to where it can do like a lot of work. And then I can have somebody on my team kind of finish it off and make a decision like for that, that final fix for the remediation. So one of the things I know is that if I shut down tunnel zero, then I'll lose my neighbor from that. So that's an easy one, right? So if someone's it's kind of the protected port thing, right? So if I shut the port down, I lose my neighbor. But if the port doesn't go down, I could lose my neighbor adjacency because um, I might have messed up the network type um, on Tunnel Zero's interface when I'm configuring it, um, or maybe um, an MTU mismatch or a hello timer, you know, something like a whole list of things that could go wrong. So what I want to do is I just want to test out two of them. So instead of having like a playbook that has a bunch of things, which I could do, and I could create like different tags for different issues. Uh, what we're going to do to keep it a little bit simple and because of um, time is we're just going to um, shut a port and see what playbook it comes up with and how to fix it and let it fix it. And then um, also screw up the, the network type. So that one will be like a different scenario, right? Where the interface is actually up. Oops, GU zero. All right, so when I shut this down, we'll go back to our observability tool, Splunk, and take a look at this. And we can see that it's down right now. Okay, so it's down. So some other things have happened for us on the Ansible side. And I'll explain like how it works after we kind of take a look at it from high level. So one of the things I want to do is go to jobs. You can see there's this job running in a workflow. So here's the workflow. I just need to get that kind of out of the way so I can make this a little bit bigger. All right. So you can see that it opened up 
a ticket in ServiceNow. And then it's saying AI create playbook. And then it's running a playbook in check mode. So all these things are happening. And then it kind of lands here in this human review. What happens here is if the workflow is going to, it will actually stop at this point. And it'll create like a, um, a Slack notification to the network team. And it's going to require somebody to, and I don't think you can see that on the screen. I probably have to like go into Slack to show it to you. But basically it's going to say like someone needs to review this, right? And here's the workflow ID and a cross link into like all this information. And someone needs to review the playbook and it'll give a link to the playbook in the repository. So what happens is we're asking AI to create a playbook and then we're saving that playbook in a repository. And we need to review that playbook in the output of what happened in running it in check mode to make a decision on if we want to move forward or not in this workflow and make the change um, that happened. So uh, what I need to do here is um, I do want to show you the ticket. Let's go through these real quick. So to get to the ticket, I need this output, right? So it gave me an incident number. Oops. I got like this other thing on the screen that gets in the way from the um, from the meeting itself. All right, so let me get in here and copy this. And then we'll go into service now real quick. Log in. Let's, uh, service now is a little bit slow for some reason. And then I'm going to paste in that incident. And you can see that um, it creates a ticket, right? So there's a new ticket, the urgency is high. It was assigned to the system administrator, but we could have had it set up with you know individuals. And then we sent this information that we received because what happened was is a syslog message went to Splunk and then we created an event in Splunk. So um, let me kind of back up and show you that because I just showed you that this was down. So what happened was you go into alerts And you'll see that I had this OSPF neighbor alert set up. And if I go into like the settings for this, you can see that we have a triggered alert. On the Splunk side, we're calling it a medium, but it creates this workflow. And the workflow is going to this uh, IP address to my lab um, on this port. So this is where event-driven Ansible is picking up on that webhook that's coming in. So it's listening for that webhook. And what we send in the payload is everything that was sent in the syslog message. So um, the syslog that came in, in this case, was for um, the adjacency problem. So like if we go into these guys and just like, like really just click into any of these, right? This is what happened is we went from full to down and it tells us in the payload um, who the neighbor was and like, you know, additional information. I think I can expand out on this. Like it gives us like all this information comes in the payload. So we have that coming in, we're receiving it on our side um, on the event driven Ansible side of things. So the event driven Ansible was sitting over here and let me get this out of the way. If we go down into here, we've got these rulebook activations. This one's called OSPF neighbor. And when I go into history and go into the running one, um, this is what happened here. Let me move that out of the way. And you can see that um, what happens is it fires off the rule book. And in the rule book, it's set to, to launch that workflow that we were looking at. So here's like all the data that was collected. But before that, you can see that it's waiting here. It's listening for an OSPF neighbor events webhook. So that came in and then we read in like all this data that came in from the webhook. See how it says OSPF adjacency and it's got the neighbor and all this information. This information was passed over uh, to the service now. So that's what you're seeing in here. So that this is a part of the ticket. So this is what, what happened, right? The adjacency went down to this neighbor. These are just details, right? So we haven't fixed anything yet. So for the resolution of all this stuff, 
and I go back into the job, we look at our workflow, right? And we can see that AI playbook create, right? So we look at the, um, the output of this. So this, we send a request to Lightspeed API from a playbook. Um, and we're asking it to create a playbook for us. So this is um, the actual response that comes back. And this here is actually um, a playbook. Right, so this is what it looks like in JSON. This is what it looks like in YAML. Right, so here's the playbook that it's suggesting. So we also received um, a notification to Slack that I mentioned earlier, where it says this human must review this. And this is the information of the workflow jobs and individual jobs. But then this is um, taking us to a link to the playbook that was created six minutes ago. Right, so it's the same thing. The output from the AAP and also it was saved to this repo. So if you look at this repo, you can see that it created a playbook and it's got um, different conditionals to run based off of what the state of the interfaces are. So how did it know to do all this stuff? So in the actual um, playbook that we ran as, as part of the AI ops, let me go into here and show you that real quick. So if I go into the playbooks, this is the playbook that was run to create the playbook for us. So a playbook to create a playbook. So this playbook is interacting with the Lightspeed API here using this URI module. So we're you know just calling it directly from the API. And um, what we're asking is based off of this prompt. So create me a playbook, um, call it OSPF fix, the host is going to be router one and then create the task to do these things. So for um, tunnel zero, we want to run a task here where it's getting this out of the way so I can see it, where if um, if the tunnel zero here is up, then check to make sure that it has the correct OSPF network type, which should be point to point. If it's down, check to see if it's administratively down and line protocol down. And if so, that's where we're going to unshut the interface. So it's like two different scenarios, right? So um, this is just a prompt. So I'm just asking in an intelligent way in an order, build me a playbook that does these things. And then it's going to respond with the answer. So I haven't changed the prompt. So I'm getting, I get the same answer every time. If you like add additional things to this, you could ask for like other things, like check to see if there's an M MTU mismatch or hello timer. Like you add like more to this playbook and it'll create more tasks around that. So you just need to ask it, you know, in a way that it understands um, the detail of what you're trying to get it to do. And it'll create the, the playbook for that. So that was the playbook that we looked at was this. Right. So the other thing that happened is we actually run this playbook. Right. So we run this playbook in check mode. So if I go back to jobs, workflow, right? And then this will be the output of check mode. And we can see that this says change, but it doesn't actually change because this is check mode, but we can see like what it would change. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna do a no shutdown on tunnel zero, because that's a scenario where we shut that port down. And then to resolve it, I just need to, um, go back into that workflow or access this from the, the REST API and accept it, approve it, and it'll move forward and it'll make, it'll actually make that change. But before I do that, just to show you here, we haven't made that change yet. Oops. What's going on? I didn't delete it. We can see that the tunnel zero is still down, right? Because we ran that in check mode. But then when I approve this, we'll move forward. You can see that, I don't know if you can see on the screen, but in Slack it approved. Um, the workflow moves forward and creates a new job for the, um, the next playbook. And that should be running in the jobs, right? So here is running that actual playbook that was created in AI. And the change was obviously that it did the no shut. So then I go back here, right? And it's up 
and then we go back to the Splunk. Let me go back to the um, the routing dashboard. Right, and it's up. And then our play our um, ticket right should be closed. So if I go back into here and just like refresh this. Then you can see there was an update here where we closed the ticket. So it shows that it's you know, line protocol up and the neighbors up. So we close the ticket out here. And then the last thing is we go back to the job and the workflow should be completed. All right, so everything is a success here. Right, so that was that was one um, scenario, and we're kind of like going over time. So I'm just going to do one thing real quick. I'm not going to go to the second part. I'm just going to let it run the first part, um, so that it can resolve a different type of issue. So the second issue is if I go into here, and I'm in tunnel zero, but I'm doing um, IPOSTF network. Oops, non-broadcast. Right, that's going to not break the interface, but um, it's going to break the neighbor. So there's no neighbor, right? So it went away because uh, we broke it with a configuration. And then what we'll notice is we go back, same same thing, refresh this. Right, it's down and we go back to our jobs and it kicked off another workflow. Right, so this will stop here in just a second. But since we're to this this part here as well, you'll see that um, that it's it's basically it's gonna make the same playbook because we didn't change the prompts, right? There was no new requirements. So I go back into here and click into this, right? So this one just happened now in the repo and it built like the same playbook, right? Cause we didn't add or remove anything from the prompt. So we're getting the same, you know, consistent answer back from, from the LLM for that. And then we can see in check mode this time, what it's saying is it's going to want to add IP OSPF network point to point to fix that problem, right? Because we changed it to the non-broadcast. That was wrong. So that was the fix. So for MTU, it would be like it would change it to the correct MTU size or some other timer. We would just add additional tasks so that way it can map to that if that um, was the issue. So again, this gives us you know level of confidence that it works, and then we can apply it to the device, and then ultimately, um, from the repo of all this stuff, we could merge it into like our main branch that we would apply um, into our um, production.